This is Dateline NBC. Tonight. If your kids play with this, you wake up to this or wear these, your money's going to the people who did this. A Dateline investigation. This is the craziest thing I ever saw. How the Chinese army is putting Americans out of work. And you don't see any people there now because they're no longer sewing. Anything wrong with that? Of course there's nothing wrong with it. Do you want your dollars supporting the world's biggest communist army? Dateline with anchors Jane Pauley and Stone Phillips. With Brian Ross, Deborah Roberts, John Scott, Lee Thompson, and Faith Daniels. Dateline continues after this brief message. From our studios in New York, here are Jane Pauley and Stone Phillips. Good evening. When you spend your money at some of America's biggest and most popular stores, do you know what you're really paying for? Do you know who made the product you're buying and where? When we started asking some of those questions, it took us on a trip halfway around the world. Even if you read the label very carefully, you couldn't know what Brian Ross found out in his latest Dateline undercover investigation. But you should know, it's not only your money, it could be your job. This is the story of a once thriving factory in Connecticut. A stuffed toy rabbit. A secret overseas mission. And the largest communist army in the world today. This is the craziest thing I ever saw. The story starts in Washington, D.C at the museums of the Smithsonian Institution, where millions come every year to learn something of the nature and history of America. But over in the gift shop, there is something else to be learned, one small lesson about the nature of American business in the 1990s. The Smithsonian special wild heritage stuffed animals are now being made a long way from America and by some very unlikely people. If we were to manufacture this toy in the United States, this toy would cost four to five times more than what I landed for from the Orient. This is where our old manufacturing used to be. Like a lot of American business people these days, Bill Burnham of Trudy Toys in Norwalk, Connecticut, says he had no choice but to shut down production here when he found an incredibly cheap source of labor overseas. And you don't see any people there now because they're no longer sewing. Where more than a hundred people used to work, there are now only a few. And their job is to mostly unload boxes from China. Boxes full of the same Smithsonian stuffed animals that used to be made here, but are now made by some companies in China that neither Burnham nor the Smithsonian know much about, including a company called Norinco. Do you know who Norinco is, what they make? No, I don't. And that's just the way they like it in China. Norinco is a giant state-owned conglomerate headquartered in Beijing that has gone to great lengths to hide its true nature, involved with a lot more than just stuffed animals. Let's start with selling ballistic missiles to the Middle East. China expert William Triplett, who's worked for the CIA and Congress, says Norinco is not just any Chinese company. They are the military, basically, without question. They are the military. And that means the People's Liberation Army, the PLA, three million strong. Every gun every Chinese soldier carries. Every tank used at Tiananmen Square. Every missile fired or sold to Iran and Iraq. All made by Norinka, whose officials have now become some of the most prominent arms dealers in the world. Norinko is product uh, ranging from small arms uh, to uh, heavy arms uh, and also some anti-tank missiles. And yet, as we found in a Dateline investigation that took us to a recent trade show in China, Norinco and a number of other Chinese army companies have branched out in a big way into a wide range of consumer goods, doing business now with some of the biggest stores in the United States. The Kmart, you know, Kmart department store, uh -huh. they contact us. Foreign television reporters are not allowed to travel in China without government escorts. So, with the help of an American labor union investigating working conditions in China, we came here posing as American buyers. And the Norinco salespeople were only too glad to show us everything from Christmas tree lights 
to clocks and ceiling fans. Smithsonian. To the very stuffed animals they make for the Smithsonian collection. So this is made for the Smithsonian yeah. Institution. Mm -hmm. the Smithsonian is the American government. What is the American government doing supporting the Chinese army? Are they really doing that by buying toys? Sure. The profits go back into the Chinese army. The very same people who killed their own children in Tiananmen Square four years ago. And it's the very same people who are building up the Chinese military to be a threat into the next century. And American intelligence officials have told Dateline the People's Liberation Army is now raising billions of dollars a year in hard currency with its fast-growing sales of all kinds of consumer items. If you put it to a vote of the American people, yes or no, should you as an average American consumer subsidize the People's Liberation Army of China? I think the answer would probably be in excess of 85 or 90 percent no. But right now? But right now, it's 100 percent ignorance. Where did all this come from? Jeff Fiedler is the official at the AFL-CIO who has led the Union's China investigation tracking down the American stores buying products from Chinese military companies. For instance, uh, this toilet seat over here, this oak toilet seat. This is sent in to Home Depot by a PLA company. The Chinese military is making toilet seats? Yes, that's right. This pair of men's blue jeans, made in China. Uh, two very large shipments received directly by Kmart Apparel from uh, a PLA trading company. And there was this set of mini blinds that started Fiedler's investigation, bought at Walmart for the surprisingly low price of less than five dollars. I took it back and looked at it and you do a little more research and you find that it's a military company. From there it started to get bigger. So what did you do? You sent somebody into China? We set up a company and we began to do business with the Chinese military companies. And for the last year, recording everything on videotape, Fiedler's undercover investigator, Mark Atkinson, has had the red carpet treatment from the Chinese military. And an inside look at the cheapest source of labor in the world, 10 to 20 cents an hour. Places like PLA factory number 3501 in Beijing, manufacturing military and police uniforms on one day, and blue jeans on the next. The people who work here are not soldiers, they're civilians. But with the military firmly in control, the PLA factories offer goods at prices the big American stores have been unable to resist. All kinds of American businessmen have been there before us. Well before you got there. Absolutely. They were very comfortable with us. Do you think most Americans, as they walk through the aisles of Kmart or Walmart, know the number of items made by Chinese military companies? I have no idea. We work at it and didn't have any idea. Mr. Du, how are you? And we found out one reason for that from Norinko itself. Please come in. With the help of Fiedler's undercover investigator, we arranged a meeting with a top Norinko trading company official in Hong Kong, recorded with concealed cameras and a microphone hidden in a teapot. We were looking forward to meeting you. Thinking we were American buyers, the official told us Norinko uses all kinds of front companies to disguise the actual role of Norinko. There was some reason why you didn't just say it's Norinko? Yeah, no. We, we, all the companies, I think, uh, all overseas owned by Norinko have different names. No Norinko name on it. Why not? <laughs> <coughs> because of the, uh, no. the connections? Uh, because Norinko, you see, uh, it's not, it's famous in the world, but it's not famous for good things. It's famous for some weapons, the sales of weapons. Yes. To, to Iraq, to Iran, so. So if you use different names. Yeah, we use different names. And there's no better example of that than Norinko's toy business, set up with names like Beta Toys and Nutco the name of this joint venture factory, which, among other things, produces the Smithsonian stuffed animals, the same stuffed animals American workers used to make in this factory in Connecticut. They lied to me. I don't like being lied to. Toy company president Bill Burnham wasn't very Not happy sure. to see what we had found out about the people in China he'd been doing business with. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. You had no idea this was going Absolutely on. no idea. What would you do? 
I will pull the business. What can I do? But that's hardly the reaction we got from Walmart, Kmart, and Home Depot, whose officials would not even agree to appear on Dateline. Home Depot does say it will stop doing business with some Chinese military companies, but not Norinco, because it says it's not sure Norinco is connected to the military. Kmart private label. Despite what the AFL-CIO has found, Kmart said that it has never knowingly dealt with the Chinese military, either directly or indirectly. And Walmart told Dateline that the U.S. government sets trade policy and law, not Walmart, and that Walmart complies with the law. The fact is, the Chinese military companies have found a great many supporters in both American business and politics. That's where free trade is. Of course there's nothing wrong with it. Former Secretary of State Alexander Haig, who now works for several major American companies that sell goods to China, says the Chinese military is not as bad as many think. Uh, I think the people of China are, have good guys and bad guys. But wouldn't you call the military the bad guys? In China? Not at all. Just the opposite. Uh, in many respects, they are the people that want reform and want modernization. In fact, Haig says what happened at Tiananmen Square five years ago has been misconstrued, that it wasn't about democracy, just high prices wasn't a struggle for democracy. I wish it were, but it wasn't. Are you saying this because you do business with China? That you no, make money off trade with China? I do business with China because I want to help China and, and myself in the process, and that's what good American business is. And business is booming. The same Chinese military known for its reckless nuclear weapons policy, its brutality in Tibet, and its tanks in Tiananmen Square has now found a way to make billions in hard currency using its military factories and cheap labor to help stock the shelves of America's biggest stores. With all you've found, you've found nothing that breaks the law, have you? No. So these stores are doing something that is perfectly legal? Perfectly legal, but in my view, wrong. So what do you say about Kmart and the others? I'd say stop now. The Chinese government and Norinco representatives in this country refuse to talk to us, but there is a lot of talk in Congress. California Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi is among those calling on President Clinton to revoke China's most favored nation trade status. That would make it more expensive for Chinese companies, including those owned by the military, to sell goods here.